Bole Baba Ki Jai, Jai Mahamaya Ki Jai. We'll go on with chapter 40 in book 9 of the Srimad Devi Bhagavatam. Narada said, O Lord, how did the eternal Devi Mahalakshmi, the dweller in Vaikuntha, the beloved of Narayana, the presiding deity of Vaikuntha, come down to the earth, and how she became the daughter of the ocean? By whom was she first praised? Kindly describe all these in details to me and oblige. Narayana said, O Narada, in ancient days, when on Duravasa's curse, Indra was deposed of his kingdom, all the devas came down to earth. Lakshmi too, getting angry, quitted the heavens out of pain and sorrow and went to Vaikuntha and took the shelter of Narayana. The devas then went to Brahma with their hearts full of sorrow, and taking him from there, they went to Narayana in Vaikuntha. Going there, all took refuge of the Lord of Vaikuntha. They were very much distressed, and their throats, palates, and lips were quite dry. At that time, Lakshmi, the, wel the wealth and prosperity of all, came down on earth by the command of Narayana and became born in parts as the daughter of the ocean. The devas then, with the dietas, churned the Saroda ocean, and out of that, Mahalakshmi appeared. Vishnu looked on her, and her joy knew no bounds. She, smiling, grounded boons to the devas, and then offered a garland of flowers on the neck of Narayana, as a symbol of marriage celebrated. O Narada, the devas, on the other hand, got back their kingdom from the asuras. They then worshipped and chanted hymns to Mahalakshmi, and since then they became free from further dangers and troubles. Narada said, O Bhagavan, Durvasa was the best of Munis. He was attached to Brahma and had spiritual knowledge. Why did he curse Indra? What, what offense had he committed? How did the devas and the deities churn the ocean? How and by what hymns Lakshmi became pleased and appeased before Indra? What passed on between them? Say all this to me, please. Narayana said, in ancient days, Indra, the lord of the three worlds, intoxicated with wine and becoming lustful and shameless, began to enjoy Ramba in a lonely grove. After having enjoyed her, he became attract, attached to her. His mind became wholly drawn to her. He remained there in the forest, his mind becoming very passionate. Indra then saw <clears throat> the Muni Durvasa on his way from Vaikuntha to Kailash, burning with the fire of Brahma. From the body of the Rishi emanated, as it were, the rays of the thousand midday suns. On his head was the golden matted hair. On his breast there was the hoary, holy thread. He wore torn clothes. On his hands there was the danda and the kamandala. The intoxicated Purandara Indra, seeing him, bowed down to him, and he began to chant with devotion hymns to his disciple also. There, they were very glad. The Rishi with his disciples then blessed Indra and gave him one Prajapati flower. When the Muni was returning from the region of Aikuntha, Vishnu gave him that beautiful Prajapati flower. Old age, death, disease, sorrows, all are removed by the influence of this flower, and the final liberation is also attained. The Devendra was intoxicated with his wealth, so taking the flower given by the Rishi, he threw it on the head of the elephant, Aryabhata. No sooner the elephant touched the flower than he became suddenly like Vishnu, as it were, in beauty, form, qualities, fire, and age. The elephant then forsook Indra and entered into a dense forest. The lord of the devas could in no way get him under his control. On the other hand, the Muni Durvasa, seeing that Mahendra, Indra, had thus dishonored the flower, became inflamed with rage and cursed him, saying, O oh Indra, you are so mad with wealth that you have dishonored me. The flower that I gave you so lovingly, you have thrown that out of vanity on the elephant's head. No sooner one gets the food, water, fruits that has been offered to Vishnu, one should eat that at once. Otherwise, 
he incurs the sin. If anybody forsook sakes the things offered to Vishnu that he has got perchance, he becomes destitute of wealth, prosperity, intelligence, and his kingdom. And if he eats the food already offered to Vishnu with devotion, he then elevates his hundred families passed before him, and he himself becomes liberated while living. O oh, you stupid, the earth becomes purified by the contact of the dust of the feet of such a devoted one who is so devoted to Vishnu. If anybody eats the food unoffered to Vishnu and flesh that is not offered to any deity, if he eats the food of any unchaste woman, the, f the food offered at any uh, funeral ceremony, all of his sins incurred in that way above mentioned, will be removed if he eats the prasadam of Vishnu, the food offered to Lord Vishnu. And when you have cast away the Prajapati flower offered by me on the elephant's head, then I say unto you that the Mahalakshmi will leave you and she will go back to Narayana. I am highly devoted to Narayana, so I do not fear anybody. I fear neither the creator nor Kal, the destroyer, nor old age, nor death, was to speak of other petty persons. I do not fear you, Father Prajapati Kasyapa, nor do I fear your family priest Brihaspati. Now he on whose head there lies the flower Prajapati offered by me. Verily, he should be worshipped by all means. Hearing those words of Dravasi, Indra became bewildered with fear, and being greatly distressed and holding the feet of the moon, he cried out loudly. He said, The curse is now well inflicted on me, and it has caused me delusion, my delusion to vanish. Now I do not want back my Raja Lakshmi from you. Instruct me on knowledge. This wealth is the source of all evils. It is the cause of the veil of all knowledge. It hides the final liberation and is great obstacle on the way to get the highest devotion. The Muni said, this birth, death, old age, disease, and afflictions all come from wealth and the manipulation of great power. Being blind by the darkness of wealth, he does not see the road to mukti. The stupid man that is intoxicated with wealth is like the one that is intoxicated with wine. Surrounded by many friends, he is surrounded by the unbreakable bondage. The man that is intoxicated with wealth, blind with prosperity and overwhelmed with these things has no thought for the real knowledge. He who is rajasic is very much addicted to passions and desires. He never sees the path to sattva guna. The man that is blind with sense objects is of two kinds, firstly rajasic and secondly tamasic. He who has no knowledge of the sastram is tamas, sastras is tamasic, and he who has the knowledge of the sastras is rajasic. O child of the devas, Two paths are mentioned in the sastras. One is pravritti, going toward the sense objects, and the other is nirvritti, going away from them. The jivas first follow the path of pravritti, the path that is painful and their own accord like a madman. As bees blind with the desire of getting honey, honey so to the lotus bud and get themselves entangled there so that the jivas the embodied souls, desirous first of getting enjoyments, come to this very painful cycle of birth and death, this worldly life, which is, in the end, is realized as vapid and only cause of old age, death, and sorrow, and get themselves enchained, therefore, into many births. He travels gladly in various wombs, obtained by his own karmas, till at last, by the favor of the gods, he comes in contact with the saints. Thus, one out of thousands, or out of hundred thousands, finds means to cross the terrible ocean of the world. When the saintly person kindle the lamp of knowledge and show the way to mukti, then the jivas make an attempt to sever this bond to the world. 
After many births, many austerities, and many fastings, he then finds safely the way to mukti, leading to the highest happiness. O oh, Indra, what you asked me, I thus heard from my guru. O oh, Narada, hearing the words of the Muni Dravasa, Indra became dispassionate towards the samsara. Day by day, his feelings of dispassion increased. One day, when he would return to his own home from the hermitage of the Muni, he saw the heavens overspread by the demons, and it had become terrible. At some places, outrage and oppression knew no bounds. Some places were devoid of friends. At some places, some persons had lost their father, mothers, wives, relatives, so no rest and repose could be found. Thus, seeing the heavens in the hands of the enemies, Indra went out in quest of Brihaspati, the family preceptor of the Devas. Seeking to and from Indra ultimately went to the banks of the Mandakini and sitting with his face turned toward the earth, east, towards the sun, was meditating on Parabrahma, who has his faces turned everywhere. Tears were flowing down from his eyes and the hairs of his body stood erect with, del with delight. He was elderly in knowledge, the spiritual teacher of all. Served by all great men, he was held as the most dear to all. Those who are Janams regard him as their guru. He was the eldest of all the brothers. He was considered a very unpopular to the enemies of the Devas. Seeing the family priest Brihaspati merged in that state of meditation, Indra waited there. When after one Prahara, three hours, the Guru Deva got up. Indra bowed down to his feet and began to weep and cry out repeatedly. Then he informed his Guru about his curse from a Brahmin, his acquiring the true knowledge as so very rare, and the wretched state of the Devas, Deva Loka, wrought by the enemies. O best of Brahmins, hearing thus the words of his disciple, the intelligent speaker, Brihaspati, spoke with his eyes reddened out of anger. O Lord of the Devas, I have heard everything that you have said. Do not cry. Have patience. Hear attentively what I say. The wise politicians of good behavior with more precepts never lose their heads and get themselves distressed in the times of danger. Nothing is everlasting, whether prosperity or adversity. All the transcends, all are transcend. They only give troubles. All are under one's own karma. One is master of one's own karma. What has been done in previous births, so one will have to reap the fruits afterwards. This happens to all persons eternally, births after births. Pain and happiness are like the ring of a rolling wheel. So what pain is there? It is already stated that one's own karmas must be enjoyed in this holy brata. The man enjoys the effects of his karmas, auspicious or inauspicious. Never the karmas get exhausted in 100 koti kalpas without their effects being enjoyed. The karmas, whether auspicious or inauspicious, must be enjoyed. Thus it is stated in the Vedas and as well by Sri Krishna, the Supreme Spirit. Bhagavan Sri Krishna addressed Brahma, the lotus born in the Samaveda Saka, that all persons acquire their births, whether in Bharata or in any other country, according to the karma that he had done. The course of Brahma, Brahmana comes through his karma, and the blessings of a brahmana come again by his karma. By karma, one gets great wealth and prosperity, and by karma, one gets great poverty. You may take 100 koti births. The fruit of karma must follow you. O oh, Indra, the fruits of karma follow one like one shadow. Without enjoyment, 
that can never die. The effects of karma become increased or decreased according to time, place, and the persons concerned. As you will give away anything to persons of different natures in different times and in different places, you merit, your merit acquired will also vary accordingly. Gifts made on certain special days bring in koti times the fruits, merits, and blessings uh, or infinite times or even more than that. Again, gifts similar in nature, made in similar places, yield punyams, koti times, infinite times, or even more than that. But similar things given to similar persons yield similar punyams. As the grains vary in their nature, as the field di differ, so gifts made to different persons yield different grades of punyas infinitely superior or infinitely inferior, as the case may be. Cubing things to a Brahmin on any ordinary day yields simple punya only. But if the gift be made to a Brahmin on Amasvasya day, new moon day, or on the Sankranti day, the day when the sun enters another sign, then hundred times more punyas is, is acquired. Again, charities made on the the uh, with the vow that lasts for four months in the rainy season, or on the full moon day, yield infinite merits. So charities made on the occasion of the lunar eclipse yield many also. As charities made on holy days yield religious merits, so bathing, reciting mantras and other holy acts yield meritorious results. A superior results are obtained by pious acts, so inferior results are obtained by impious acts. As an earthen pot potter makes pots, jars out of the earth with the help of the rod, wheel, earthen cups or plates and motion. So the creator awards respective fruits to different persons by the help of this thread of karma. Therefore, if you want to have succession of this fruition of karma, then worship Narayana, by whose command all these things of nature are created. He is the creator of even Brahma, the creator of the, of the preserver of Vishnu, the preserver of the destroyer of Shiva, the destroyer of the Kal, the great time. Shankara has said, he who remembers Madhusdana, a name of Vishnu, is in great troubles. His danger sees and happiness begins. O Narada, the wise Brihaspati thus advised Indra and then embraced him and gave him his hearty pleasure and blessings and good wishes. Here ends the fourth. 40th chapter of the ninth book of the birth of Lakshmi in the discourse of Narada and Narayana in the Mahapurana Sri Devi Bhagavatam of 18,000 verses by Maharishi Veda Vyasa. Jai Mahamaya ki jai Vishveshpari mati ki jai Bole Baba ki jai.